Looking back from today, I can see sort of three phases in the community energy sector. The, the, the old days, the good old days before the feed-in tariff, when schemes had to be grant funded, the enthusiasms of local groups, looking around not much skills and experience in delivering these schemes, and some great schemes, but perhaps not that many, but 100% grant funded. Then the feed-in tariff really came in and that changed everything. There was profit to be made. Communities got involved partly because of the green energy, but partly because it was an income way. It was a way of getting, generating a consistent and long-term income for their communities. And many schemes were built over that period. But the digression, uh, the, the feed-in tariff rates were probably set too high, and they, as soon as they were introduced, they started to fall. And those returns have got smaller and smaller. With the feed-in tariff disappearing next year, the future of renewable distributed energy is looking a little bit hazy. But I think where it's going to lie is in producing energy locally that is consumed locally, that we can match local generation with local demand, taking the strain off the distribution system, not having all of our renewable energy generated in the Southern North Sea. To develop those plans, I think it's going to need some proper co-production, local authorities working together with bodies like Natural Resources Wales, who have some of the estate, with community groups, or some of the expertise that the uh, Welsh Government's initial oil programme can produce, to put together local plans that can maximise carbon reduction, fuel poverty alleviation, and build plans that can work in a subsidy-free environment.